This is my Lord Part 1. Explanation to Beautiful and Perfect Names of Allah Introduction All praise is due to Allah, and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad, his family, and all his companions. To proceed One of the most sublime of all spheres of knowledge, even the greatest of them all, is knowledge of Allah Almighty and His names and attributes. A fundamentalist rule says, the honor of knowledge comes from the honor of the known. Undoubtedly, the most honorable known entity is Allah Almighty. People's neglect of this sphere is clear and common, even though it is the broadest sphere where one can worship Allah, exalted and glorified. Studying His names and learning their meanings is the most beneficial for the purification of one's heart. The validity of one's actions and the increase of one's faith as well as one's glorification and love for the Almighty Lord. Al-Bukhari and Muslim narrated that the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah has 99 names, i.e. 100-1. Whoever knows them by heart shall enter paradise. And Allah is odd, one, and he loves the odd number. So, let us pay due attention to this knowledge and be devoted to learning it with the aim of winning the reward and approval of Allah Almighty. And avoiding his punishment. In this regard, I would remind you of two useful books. The first is Al Naj al Asma Fi Shar Asma Allah al Husna, authored by His Eminence Sheikh Muhammad al Hamad al Nadi. The second book is Walila al Asma al Husna, by His Eminence Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Nasir al Jalil. May Allah bless them both. I have prepared this book to explain the meanings of many names of our Lord. I have also clarified some of the benefits we reap from studying those beautiful names. I implore Allah Almighty to accept and bless this work. May Allah guide us all to what pleases Him and grant us happiness in this world and in the hereafter. Your brother. Khalid Ibn Abdullah al Khalawi. This is my Lord. The greatest mission of the Prophets is informing humankind about the Creator, then informing them about the path leading to Him and to His pleasure and then informing them of the end they will come to if they follow this path and outrun others. This end is that Allah Almighty will be pleased with them and will admit them into the gardens of bliss. Here are wishes we hope that Allah will grant and bless. 1. To set the study of the meanings of the names of Allah as part of the curricula of schools and universities in recognition of the right of our Lord upon us and in pursuit of the effect of this. Knowledge upon our hearts and manners. Indeed, it is an area of knowledge needed by everyone without exception. 2. To consider my book as part of the curricula in the Quran memorization schools as well as non-governmental schools. Note, in this book, like other books, you will find some names of Allah that the scholars held different opinions in establishing them. So, let not this disagreement distract you from the information about Allah Almighty. And the great meanings and benefits contained in the relevant verses and hadiths which will illuminate the path for you in worshipping Allah. Upon Allah rely and from Him seek help. Allah. This is the name that encompasses all meanings of His other names and attributes, and to it they all refer. No one but Him is worthy of worship. The name Allah occurs 2724 times in the Quran. An example of this is what is mentioned in Surat al Fatiha all praise belongs to Allah with regards to His essence, attributes, and actions, because He is the creator of everything. Everything belongs to him and he is the disposer of their affairs. Blessing individuals specifically and humans in general, in the verse of Al-Kursi, Allah is the one who alone deserves to be worshipped. He is the one who lives perfectly without any death or deficiency. He exists by himself and is not in need of any of his creation. The creation only exists through him and is always in need of him. Drowsiness or sleep does not come upon him due to the perfection of his life and existence. He alone controls the heavens and the earth, and in Surat Ali Klas, say, O Messenger, he is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except him. Some scholars said that it is the ever greatest name of Allah. In light of this great name, would say. 1. Know that you will attain happiness only through your belief in Allah following his guidance, remembering him a lot, showing gratitude to him and worshipping him properly. 2. Remember that Allah Almighty is the most beloved being ever, and this is due to his perfection and beauty and the immense favors he bestows upon his creation. Hearts only enjoy tranquility through remembering him and souls only enjoy pleasure by knowing him.
The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, there are three qualities. Whoever has them will taste the sweetness of faith, to love Allah and his messenger more than anyone else. Narrated by Al-Bakari. 3. Whoever knows Allah Almighty will possess such pride and tranquility that prompt him to fear none but Allah and to seek help only from him. 4. The worst wrongdoing a person may engage in is to know that Allah is his creator and nonetheless worship someone else. And that Allah is the one who bestows favors upon him and nonetheless shows gratitude to someone else. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was asked, which sin is the greatest? He said, to set up an equal to Allah while he has created you. Narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Araman Arahim. The most compassionate, the most merciful. The most compassionate, it is a name denoting the vast mercy of Allah that encompasses all the creatures. This name exclusively belongs to Allah Almighty, and we may not call anyone by it. The name, the most compassionate occurs 57 times in the Quran. For example, the compassionate, merciful, one, possessor of vast mercy. He taught the Quran to people by making its memorization easy and facilitating the understanding of its meanings. Araman, 1-2 The merciful the most compassionate who established himself on the throne, in a meaning that is befitting for his majesty, may he be glorified. Surat Taha, 5 The most merciful, is the one who possesses the vast mercy towards his creation. The believers, the good doers, and the merciful people are the biggest winners of this mercy. The name, the most merciful, occurs 123 times in the Quran. These include, he is the one who showers mercy upon you and praises you, and his angels pray for you that he removes you from the darkness of disbelief into the light of faith. And Allah is merciful to the believers, so he does not punish them when they obey him by fulfilling his command and refrain from what he has prohibited, Surat Al-Azab, 43. And over and above this bliss they will have peace that they will get, as a statement from a Lord who is merciful to them. When he will greet them with peace they will attain peace and safety from all sides and they will obtain the greeting that no other greeting can surpass. Surat Yasin, 58 In light of these two great names, I would say. 1. Know that when you remember the vastness of the mercy of Allah Almighty your love for him and pursuit of his grace increase. 2. Do not forget the Prophet's statement, show mercy to those on earth, and the one in the heaven will show mercy to you. Indeed. This is one of the best means whereby one can attain the mercy of Allah Almighty. 3. Be one of the good doers so as to win the promise of Allah Almighty in Surat Al-Araf, verse 56. Indeed, the mercy of Allah is near to the doers of good. 4. Be smart and pursue in the book of Allah and the sunnah of his prophet the means that bring you the mercy of Allah which is exclusively for the believers. Ruf, the all-kind. It refers to the one with complete kindness. Kindness is the highest level of mercy. Whoever shows kindness to people will be shown kindness by Allah Almighty. The great name, the all-kind, occurs ten times in the Quran. An example came in Surat al-Hadid. He is the one who sends down clear verses upon his servant Muhammad, peace be upon him, to take you out of the darkness of disbelief and ignorance, into the light of faith and knowledge. And indeed, Allah is kind and merciful to you that he sent his prophet to you as a guide and a bearer of glad tidings, Surat al-Hadid, 9. Another example came in Surat al-Imran, on the day of resurrection every person will find the good that he did in front of him, without any deficiency. Those who did bad will wish that there was a great distance between them and their bad actions, but shall a desire will be worthless. Allah warns you of himself, so do not become the subject of his anger by committing sins. Allah is kind to his servants and therefore gives them this warning, Surat al-Imran, 30. The name, the ever-compassionate, occurs in association with the name, the most merciful, in eight verses. In light of this noble name, I would say. 1. This name instills love for Allah Almighty in one's heart and hope for what he has. No one is ever more kind or merciful than he. 2. Kindness originally comes from Allah Almighty. He is compassionate towards his servants. He revealed the scriptures and sent the messengers to them, made it easy for them to worship him and he accepts repentance from them. Also, his compassion is shown as a result of invocation. 
Allah responds to his servants when they invoke him sincerely and earnestly. And those who came after these people and followed them with righteousness until the day of judgment, say. O oh, our Lord forgive us and our brothers in religion who preceded us in bringing faith in Allah and his messenger, and do not place any grudge or resentment in our hearts for any of the believers. Our Lord. Indeed, you are kind to your servants and merciful towards them. Surat al-Hashr, 10. 3. It is said regarding the difference between kindness and mercy, as al qurtubi mentioned, kindness is a blissful favor from all aspects. Whereas mercy may be painful at the moment, with a blissful outcome later. Hence, Allah Almighty says about the punishment of the adulterers, and do not be taken by kindness for them in the religion of Allah. Surat al-Nur, 2. The unmarried fornicating man and woman, flog each one of them with a hundred lashes, and no softness or mercy should affect you. Whereby you do not establish the fixed punishment upon them or you make it lighter for them, if you believe in Allah and the last day. And a group of believers should be present when the fixed punishment is being executed on them, to go to the limit of publicizing their crime, and to deter them and others. Surat al-Nur, 2. He does not use the word mercy here, for beating sinners on account of their disobedience is actually a form of mercy towards them, but not kindness. In fact, if kindness engulfs a person, he suffers no harm. Al-Ghani The self-sufficient He is the one who needs none from his creation, for he has the perfect attributes, and all the creation stands in need of him. This noble name, the self-sufficient, occurs 18 times in the Quran. For example, O oh people, you are the ones in need of Allah in all your affairs and in all your conditions. And Allah is the self-sufficient who does not need you for anything, the praiseworthy in this world and the hereafter for what he decrees for his servants. Surat Fatter, 15 And Those who are miserly in spending whatever is obligatory on them to spend and instruct others to be miserly, are losers. Whoever turns away from the obedience of Allah will never harm Allah, he only harms himself. Indeed, Allah is the self-sufficient, he is in no need of the obedience of his servants, and he is praiseworthy in every state. Surat al-Hadid, 24 And Whoever is grateful to Allah, the benefit of his gratefulness will only return to him, because Allah is self-sufficient, in no need of anything. Is not benefited or harmed by the gratefulness of his servants. And whoever rejects the favors of Allah and does not thank him for them, my Lord is self-sufficient, in no need of being shown gratitude, and generous. Part of his generosity is granting those who deny them. Surat al-Namal, 40 In light of this great name, I would say. 1. Know that you can dispense with everyone save for Allah Almighty. No created being can ever dispense with the Almighty Lord, not even for the blink of an eye or less than that. 2. Remember that no matter what power, status, or authority you may possess, you will still be in need for your Lord and His mercy, help, and favors. Allah says. Allah wants to make things easy for you in His sacred law. He does not burden you with more than you are able to do, because He knows the weakness of human beings in their creation and nature. Surat al-Nisa, 28. 3. Be certain that the more you stand in need for your Lord, the richer you become. 4. In the sight of Allah, richness lies in the contentment of a person's soul. In an authentic hadith, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Richness does not lie in worldly abundance, but in contentment of the soul. Narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim The greatest thing that can fill a person's heart with contentment is to know Allah Almighty, and to love Him and believe in Him. Al-Karim, Al-Akram the generous, the most generous. The generous is a name that refers to the abundance of Allah's favors and the greatness of His giving. Indeed, Allah is generous and He loves generosity. The most generous, refers to Allah being better in generosity than every generous one. He has no equal in this. Indeed, all good lies in His hands and comes from Him. This noble name occurs three times in the Quran. An example of this is in the verse. Whoever is grateful to Allah, the benefit of his gratefulness will only return to him, because Allah is self-sufficient, in no need of anything. Is not benefited or harmed by the gratefulness of his servants. And whoever rejects the favors of Allah and does not thank him for them, my Lord is self-sufficient, in no need of being shown gratitude, and generous.
part of his generosity is granting those who deny them. Surat al namal 40 O man who has rejected his Lord! The most generous! What has made you go against the instruction of your Lord when he gave you respite and did not punish you quickly, as a favor from him? The one who gave you existence after you were non-existent, and who proportioned and balanced your limbs. Surat al infitar 6-7 as for the name, the most generous, it only occurs once in the Quran in the verse that reads, O Messenger! Read what Allah reveals to you. Your Lord is the most kind, no kind person can come to his kindness, because he has abundant generosity and goodness. Surat al alaq 3 In light of these great names, I would say, 1. Let us praise Allah our Lord, the most generous, for none loves to be praised more than he does. Therefore, he praises himself. 2. Say with me. Glory be to the generous one whose favors are innumerable despite the commission of many sins on the part of his servants. 3. Know that the generous Lord loves the generous and bountiful people. Show generosity to others and you will be shown generosity by Allah, and give to others and Allah will give you. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Verily, your Almighty Lord is modest and generous. He is so modest that he would not turn down his servant who raises his hands to him, in supplication, empty-handed. Narrated by Ahmad and al -Tirmidhi. True is the statement, show me a miser whose lifespan was extended due to his miserliness. And tell me about a generous person who died because of his generosity. 4. Do not ever limit the areas of generosity to money and food. Indeed, there are other areas of bounty that are greater and more valuable. A person may show generosity through his standing, his knowledge, his time or his life. Generosity by giving one's life is the supreme objective ever. Al-Wahhab The Bestower He is the one who bestows a lot of favors upon his servants as grace and benevolence from him. This noble name occurs three times in the Quran. An example is the verse that says, The ones firm in knowledge say, O oh Lord, do not let our hearts move away from the truth after you have shown it to us. Save us from what happened to those who moved away from the truth. Give us, from your vast mercy, that which will guide our hearts and protect us from misguidance. Our Lord, you are the one who gives much, the bestower. Surat al Imran, 8. Another example is the verse about Prophet Suleiman, Solomon, in which Allah Almighty says. Solomon said, My Lord, forgive me my sins and grant me a kingdom especially for me which no person will have after me. My Lord, you give abundantly and are very generous, the bestower. Surat Sad, 25 In light of this noble name, I would say. 1. Belief in Allah and good deeds bring favors from our Lord, and gratitude for the favors He bestows is a reason for their continuity, blessing therein and their increase. 2. No one envies another person except because he is ignorant of this great name and does not recall the many favors that Allah Almighty has bestowed upon him. Definitely, the one who bestowed certain favors upon someone else will bestow favors upon you if you invoke him sincerely. 3. Do not do wrong to this name by thinking that the favors of Allah Almighty are only material giving. Rather, his giving is comprehensive and encompasses material and moral things. Having children is among the favors of Allah. Guiding them to the truth and making them steadfast to it is a great favor from Allah. Knowledge is one of the favors of Allah Almighty, and loving it and teaching it to others is also a great favor from Him. Wealth is a favor from Allah, and possessing it and using it to increase one's bliss by spending it on good things, and not being deeply attached to it or spending it wastefully is also a great favor from Him. Al-Jawad The Generous He is the one who bestows many favors and blessings upon his servants. This noble name does not occur in the Quran. Yet it is mentioned in the Ahadith reported by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, in which the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, indeed. Allah is generous and he loves generosity. He loves lofty manners and hates low ones, narrated by al bihaqi In light of this noble name, would say. 1. Knowing the meaning of the name, the generous and recalling the signs of Allah's generosity increases one's love for the Almighty Lord. 2. 
Since Allah is generous and bountiful, a person should frequently invoke him and hope for his mercy and rewards. 3. The generosity of Allah Almighty includes the following. Forgiveness is dearer to him than revenge and mercy is dearer to him than punishment. Grace is dearer to him than justice. And giving is dearer to him than withholding. 4. Be generous and you will win the love and generosity of the most generous. Awasi. The all-embracing. It is a name that denotes the vastness of his mercy, knowledge, majesty and all his perfect attributes. This noble name occurs nine times in the Quran. An example of this includes, you will face Allah in whichever direction you turn your face, Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. Surat al-Baqarah, 115. Allah has authority over the entire world, and he instructs his servants as he wills. Wherever you turn, you will find Allah, he surrounds his creation. Whether he instructs you to face Jerusalem or the Kaaba, or you make a mistake in the direction of prayer or are not sure of it, then it is not an issue, because to Allah belongs every direction. Allah is vast in his blessings, he covers his creation with his mercy and ease. He knows their intentions and everything that they do. Surat al-Baqarah, 115 and, but if the two separate, Allah will make each dispense with the other out of his plenty provision. Indeed, Allah is all-embracing, all-wise. Surat al-Nisa, 130. If a couple separate by divorce, issued by the man, or kul, initiated by the woman, then Allah will make each one of them rich through his vast bounty. He will enrich the man with a wife that is more suitable for him, and he will enrich the woman with a husband that is more suitable for her. Allah's bounty and mercy is vast. He is wise in his planning and decree. Surat al-Nisa, 130 In light of this great name, I would say. 1. Your knowledge of the vastness of the greatness of Allah and His mercy, power, knowledge, grace, and giving instills a sense of reverence and fear in your heart from Him, as well as love for Him. Think of the words of Allah as He says, Our Lord, you have embraced all things in mercy and knowledge. Surat Gaffer, 7. The angels who carry the throne of your Lord, O Messenger, and those who are around it, declare the transcendence of their Lord from that which is not proper for Him, they believe in Him and seek forgiveness for those who have faith in Allah, saying in their supplication. Our Lord, your knowledge and mercy encompass everything, so forgive those who repent from their sins and follow your religion and protect them from being touched by the fire. Surat Gaffer, 7. 2. You can couple Allah's name the all-embracing with all his other names, for nothing in his creation is hidden from him as he has all-embracing knowledge. Nothing within his dominion can escape his power, for he has all-embracing ability, and the preservation of the heavens and earth does not tire him. The sins of sinners do not trouble him, for he has all-embracing mercy and forgiveness. And there is no limit to his giving and rewards. For he has all-embracing generosity The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed, of grain, which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains and Allah multiplies, his reward, for whom he wills. And Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. Surat al-Baqarah, 261 The example of the reward of the believers who spend their wealth in Allah's path is like that of a grain that is planted by a farmer in fertile ground. This grain then produces seven spikes, each carrying a hundred grains Allah multiplies the reward for whomever of his servants he wishes and gives them their reward without account. Allah is bountiful and giving and he knows who deserves to have their reward multiplied. Surat al-Baqarah, 261 Al-Malik, Al-Malik The King the Almighty King The King is the one to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and earth and all that is between them, and he is the disposer of the affairs of the universe according to his will and wisdom. This noble name, the king, occurs five times in the Quran. An example is in the following verse, So high, above all, is Allah, the king, the truth. Surat Taha, 114 Allah is high above and exalted from what the idolaters describe him with of deficiencies and from what they attribute as partners to him. He is the majestic king, to whom belongs the kingdom of everything, and who is the truth and speaks the truth. 
Do not hasten, O Messenger, in reciting the Quran with Gabriel before it is completely conveyed to you, and say, O Lord, increase me in knowledge, on top of what you have already taught me. Surah Taha, 114 And he is Allah, there is no deity worthy of worship except him. He is the King, the Holy One. Surat Al-Hashr, 23 He is Allah, the one whom there is no true deity except him, he is the knower of the absent and the present, nothing is hidden from him. The benevolent of the world and the afterlife and their merciful, his mercy encompasses the worlds, the master, the pure and sacred from every deficiency, the faultless from every defect. The corroborator of his messengers with manifest signs, the observer of the actions of his servants, the Almighty whom no one can overpower. The omnipotent who controls everything through his power, the imperious. Pure and glorified is he from the idols and other things the idolaters ascribe to him. Surat Al-Hashr, 22-23 the Almighty King is a name that denotes the magnificence of the dominion of Allah. It is more powerful than the name, the King. Allah's name, the Almighty King, occurs only once in the Quran in a verse in Surat al kamar surely the pious will dwell amidst gardens and running streams. Where they will be honorably seated in the presence of an Almighty King, a supreme determiner. Surat al kamar 54 to 55 Those who are mindful of their Lord through fulfilling his instructions and refraining from his prohibitions will enjoy in gardens and in flowing streams. In an assembly of truth, in which there will be no futility or sin, by a sovereign who owns everything, a powerful one who is not unable to do anything. So do not ask about the perpetual bliss they will receive. Surat al kamar 54 to 55 in light of these two noble names, I would say. 1. You will have a great sense of awe and reverence for Allah when you remember the magnificence of His dominion and His absolute ability to dispose of all affairs within His dominion and all. Existence, for everything belongs to Him. 2. Knowledge of these excellent names entails that we should worship Allah Almighty alone, with no partner, for He alone is worthy of being worshipped. And all other wrongly worshipped entities are as Allah says, and those whom you invoke other than him do not possess, as much as, the membrane of a date seed. Surat Fatter, 13 Allah enters the night into the day so it becomes longer and he enters the day into night so it becomes longer. And he made the sun and the moon subservient, each one of them travels in its appointed orbit until a fixed time which only Allah knows, which is the day of judgment. He who fixes all of that and carries it out is Allah your Lord. To him alone belongs the kingdom. And the idols you worship besides him do not even possess the thin membrane over the date stone, so how do you worship them besides me? Surat Fatter, 13. 3. Do not seek sustenance except from its possessor, glorified is he, and to Allah belong the treasures of the heavens and earth, but the hypocrites do not comprehend. Surat al munafikan 7. They are the ones who say, do not spend your wealth on those poor people who are with the Messenger of Allah and the Bedouins around Medina so that they disperse away from him. The treasures of the heavens and the earth belong to Allah alone. He grants them to whichever servants of his he wishes. But the hypocrites do not know that the treasures of provision are in his hand, may he be glorified. Surat al munafikan 7 And and there is no creature on earth but that upon Allah is its provision. Surat Hud, 6 there is no creature that walks on the surface of the earth, whatever it may be, except that Allah has undertaken, through His grace, to provide for it. He, may He be glorified, knows where it lives on earth and He knows where it will die. The provision, place of living and place of death for everything, including creatures are in a clear book, which is the preserved tablet, Surat Hud, 6. 4. Allah Almighty is the owner of the worldly life and the hereafter. Nonetheless, the verse in Surat Al-Fatiha limits this to the hereafter only. The possessor of the day of judgment. The reason for this is that there are those in the world who claim to have power over the dominion and the affairs of life apart from Allah Almighty. To the extent that some even claim to be Fords. For example, Pharaoh said, I am your most exalted Lord. He also said, Is not the kingdom of Egypt mine, and are not these rivers running beneath me? But in the hereafter. Everyone will hide and fall silent as the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah will fold the heavens on the day of judgment and then take them in his right hand and say, I am the king. Where are the mighty ones? Where are the arrogant ones?
Then, he will fold the earths and take them in his left hand, and say, I am the king. Where are the mighty ones? Where are the arrogant ones? Narrated by Muslim. Similarly, it is revealed in Surat Gaffer that Allah Almighty will call out, to whom belongs, all, sovereignty this day, but none will reply to him. So, Allah will answer himself, saying, to Allah, the one, the superb vanquisher. Surat Gaffer, 16. The day in which they will be apparent having gathered on one plane. Nothing of theirs will be hidden from Allah, nothing of theirs will be hidden from Allah, everything from their own self, their actions, and their reward will be made apparent. He will ask, for whom is the kingdom today? There will be only be one answer at this time. The kingdom is for Allah, the one in his essence, qualities and actions, the prevailing one who has dominated everything and for whom everything has submitted. Surat Gaffer, 16. al qaduz The Most Holy. He is the one exalted far above any deficiency or defect whatsoever, for he alone possesses the attributes of absolute perfection. This noble name occurs twice in the Quran. The first in the verse that reads, He is Allah, there is no God except Him, the King, the Holy One. Surat Al-Hashr, 23. He is Allah, the one whom there is no true deity except Him, he is the knower of the absent and the present, nothing is hidden from him. The benevolent of the world and the afterlife and their merciful, his mercy encompasses the worlds, the master, the pure and sacred from every deficiency, the faultless from every defect. The corroborator of his messengers with manifest signs, the observer of the actions of his servants, the Almighty whom no one can overpower. The omnipotent who controls everything through his power, the imperious. Pure and glorified is he from the idols and other things the idolaters ascribe to him. Surat Al-Hashr, 22-23 And the second is in the verse, All that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth extols the glory of Allah, the King, the Holy One, the Almighty, the All-Wise. Surat Al-Jumu'ah, 1 All created things in the heavens and all created things on earth declare Allah's transcendence and purity from every attribute of deficiency that is not appropriate for Him. He is the Sovereign, who is alone in His sovereignty, free from every deficiency, the Mighty whom none can overpower, the wise in His creating, decree and laws. Surat al jumuah 1 In light of this great name, I would say. 1. One of the best means that increases a person's love for his Lord is knowing his perfection from all aspects and the fact that he has no deficiency whatsoever in his self or actions. 2. Part of extolling Allah Almighty is to extol His Sharia and deem it exalted above any deficiency. This requires that we rule by nothing except his sharia and follow nothing but his path, for he alone will ensure our safety in this world and in the hereafter. 3. A Muslim is recommended, after finishing witr prayer, to say three times, Glory be to the King, the Holy One, raising his voice in the third one. Narrated by Abu Dawud. 4. One of the good things said about the association between Allah's name, the King, and his name, the Holy One, is that Allah Almighty is not like the kings in the world who may commit injustice mistakes, or unwise acts or they go through heedlessness and forgetfulness. He is the Holy King who is absolutely perfect and exalted far above all defects. as -salam. The source of peace and perfection. He is the one free from all deficiencies and defects in his attributes, names, and actions. Every peace in this world and the hereafter comes from him. This noble name occurs once in the Quran in a verse that says, He is Allah, there is no God except him. He is the King, the Holy One, the Source of Peace. Surat Al-Hashr, 23 He is Allah, the One whom there is no true deity except Him, He is the Knower of the Absent and the Present, nothing is hidden from Him. The Benevolent of the World and the Afterlife and their Merciful, His Mercy encompasses the Worlds, the Master, the Pure and Sacred from every Deficiency, the Faultless from every Defect. The Corroborator of His Messengers with Manifest Signs, the Observer of the Actions of His Servants, the Almighty whom no one can overpower. The Omnipotent who controls everything through His power, the Imperious. Pure and glorified is He from the idols and other things the idolaters ascribe to Him. Surat Al-Hashr, 22-23 And it occurs in the Sunnah, in a prophetic supplication to be said after the five obligatory prayers, O Allah, You are the source of peace and from You is the peace. Blessed are You, Owner of Majesty and Honor.
narrated by Muslim. In light of this great name, I would say. 1. A Muslim should believe that Allah Almighty is safe from any deficiency or defect in his self, names, attributes and actions. So, he is safe from death or sleep. His words are safe from lying, his promise is safe from being broken and his threat is safe from being unjust. 2. In order to attain peace and safety from Allah, you should heed the Prophet's instruction, spread peace amongst you. Narrated by Muslim. Spread peace among people through your word steeds. 3. Paradise is the abode of peace. Allah Almighty says, For them will be the home of peace with their Lord. Surat Al Anam, 127. Such people will be awarded paradise on the day of judgment, in which they will be safe from every type of harm and discomfort. Allah will be their friend, protector, supporter, and guardian. This will be their reward for the good actions they used to do. Surat Al Anam, 127. It is the abode of pure bliss. There will be no trouble or unhappiness therein. Its dwellers will be safe from any illness that used to disturb them in the worldly life. Peace will be their greeting in it. So, worship Allah, the source of peace, you will attain paradise, the home of peace.